Let's go now to Labor MP Peter Khalil, who's standing by in our Canberra studio. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Peter Khalil. Will Labor lend its numbers Morning, to this climate emergency? Well, it's a motion, and I haven't seen the uh, the wording of that motion, that text, and we'll, we'll all, as with every motion and bill and so forth that goes through the parliament, we, we look at the uh, the copy and uh, determine the text and determine whether we would support a motion or not. I can tell you this, though, it, it is a motion. What can be done about climate change is done by governments. And, and, and obviously Labor had policies that it took to the last election that if we won and we were government, would have seen $15 billion investment in renewable energy. It would have seen hundreds of millions into recycling. It would have seen um, a, for, a, a commitment to a 45% reduction in emissions. Uh, it would have seen a commitment to renewable energy by 2050 or 50%. There, that's real action. Um, so what the, this minor party now is proposing is a motion uh, in the Senate, I think, originating in the Senate or the House, I think, yeah. with Adam. We'll have a look at it, but it doesn't actually do anything. Do, do you and, agree and with the worse, premise, though? You, do you agree it, with the premise, though? And, and what would be... I mean, you're hedging your bets a bit here. What would be the downside of supporting this in the Parliament? Oh, I, I think there absolutely has to be action taken on climate change. This government is doing nothing, worse than doing nothing, it's going backwards, uh, Laura. We've got David Littleproud just in the media yesterday saying he doesn't believe that climate change is man-made, despite no, all the evidence from that. science that we've seen. He he's, he's he said he doesn't know. He said, no, not I'm not sure that it's man-made. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're... I'm glad you're well, he's, that's right. He's not an expert. That's why you should take the advice of experts, <laughs> such as the scientists, such as CSIRO, such as, you know, the vast majority of scientific evidence that demonstrates that that climate change is real. It is happening. Uh, the fact is they're not doing anything on it. They're, they're even squibbing it on the, on, with the re, their reductions on emissions, 26%, and they're using the Kyoto credits, which basically the only other country that's doing that is Ukraine. So it's much lower than even the 26% that they're saying that they're going to try and reach. But even Labor's climate change policy is under review. We heard from Mark Butler and Alvin, Al Anthony Albanese that, that nothing <coughs> is sacrosanct there. So with an eye to reviewing all of your policies and that on climate change, do you accept that perhaps after this review, after the election defeat, that you may have to rethink your level of ambition? Well, Laura, every, you know, you, you wouldn't expect a political party to take policies that they had five years ago, ten years ago, to an election two years uh, in the future. It is normal, and I think it is right, that every political party uh, reviews its policy. Obviously, after an election loss, we have to look at what we got right, what we didn't get right, um, do the policy development work. Circumstances change as well. We're undertaking that process right now. And I know that everyone it could be is a, kind a revision of revision down, though, that Labor might, in these political circumstances, in the current economic climate, may need to be less ambitious. Well, I mean, that has to be assessed with respect to the circumstances that we face in the lead-up to the next election, what the situation is with the economy, what the situation with, is with the effects of climate change, all of these things have to be done on an evidence base basis. And, and I think that's right and proper for us to conduct that policy review. I think it would be really, um, really irresponsible if we were to just stick to the same thing that we had years and years ago for two years into the future. It's a proper process. And I know everyone wants us to say, what are you doing now? Well, Albo uh, and the leadership have said we are going to do a proper policy review. And I think people and the media particularly need to be a bit more patient so that we can do sure. our work as an opposition. We no, hold, and I'm we not hold asking the government you to, to declare account policies and we prevent... now. No, that's... Yeah, I, I yeah. totally accept oh, that. Good. You're going through I'm a review. Glad. An election is until two, uh, 2022. But it's you sit here with, um, this morning and agree that there is a climate emergency. So how will that shape your climate change uh, policy? I mean, there's a few difficult areas you need to, to work out. Will, will you be potentially more ambitious? Well, I don't know. Uh, we're going to go through a policy review, possibly. Um, it depends on what the situation is. Um, you know, there, there could be different uh, in, in parts of the policy that might change. We might need to emphasise other parts. You know, the recycling industry, for example, has sort of collapsed in Australia. We need to focus our attention on that. Things change. It doesn't mean it's less ambitious or more, more ambitious. There could be emphasis on different elements of the, the work that we do, need to do to tackle mm. climate change. And I think that's a responsible course of action. Where do you think the Labor Party should go? On climate? On... Well, I, my view is that climate change is real. We need to actually 
uh, address climate change as best as we can as a government. Um, the community does as well, but, but obviously the actions of a government have a huge impact on uh, emissions, uh, on, on, on the effects of climate change, and that's something that, you know, we, we took to the last election some very good policies, and, and many of them, I think, uh, are important in tackling climate change. So no, I hope that uh, myself and other caucus members, we will be part of that policy review process uh, with respect to these areas. And do you believe more, more broadly um, we have competing, I guess, messages from Wayne Swan and, and Mark Butler, two key figures within uh, Labor. Who do you agree with about where you should go with your policy <laughs> manifesto? Well, that's a very broad question, Laura. I mean, we're talking Pretty about simple. hundreds it's one of or different... the other, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, no, it's, there's, there's many different policy areas and, and my, I'll put my own views uh, into the caucus process about uh, each different policy for what they're worth uh, and my colleagues will do the same, our leadership uh, does so as well. Um, some of those uh, issues might be agreed with, with certain colleagues, some, some not. That's what you have with respect to a really okay. good policy development process. You have a discussion about it. OK, it's going to be a long one. Uh, finally, before I let you go, Gladys Liu, how concerned are you about her links to the Chinese Communist Party? Well, I think that, I mean, that interview yesterday was uh, actually made things less clear. Uh, and, you know, you've got to ask the question, where is the Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, where is the Prime Minister? They, they really need to start answering the questions about whether she's a fit and proper person to be in the Parliament, um, what membership she has of these organisations, whether she's taken stipends and honorariums, has she declared it? These are all serious questions that need to be answered by the Prime Minister to determine whether she's a fit and proper person for this Parliament. Um, it, it is very disturbing and, and, and they need to answer those questions. Well, they need to answer those questions. They're, they're questions that have to be answered by the, uh, the, uh, the, the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister. Uh, as to what I think, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I was watching that, uh, uh, like everybody else, thinking, what is going on here? There, there was really a, a much more difficult to understand things after the interview than before. It made it less clear, her answers. She denied that, that $300,000 in do donations had to be returned, so that was clearly uh, a problem. Uh, she's denied that there were any security risks attached to some of the guests that she'd, you know, put towards uh, donating towards the Liberal Party. So she's got some serious questions to answer. But I think ultimately the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister need to, you know, answer these questions and, and make those determinations. 